Hey everybody, it's opening day. The Boston Red Sox are down in Florida and they're taking on the Tampa Bay Rays at Tropicana Field. We'll get to that game in a second. Before I get to the game, I wanted to let everybody know to subscribe to my channel. I'm doing a giveaway where I'm giving away 30 free tickets to an MLB game for April. All you have to do is be a subscriber and just to enter, simply comment down below and tell me what game you'd like to go see. Go ahead and pick any game from Monday through Thursday. Um, any game, except for opening day, because I'm figuring I'll pay like $10 a ticket. Um, it's like $300, and I'll just use my YouTube money from last month to cover that. I'd like to have everyone on board. If you're looking for the live stream of this game, the Red Sox and Rays, it is available over on Reddit, uh, R-E-D-D-I-T. Just Google MLB streams Reddit. Uh, can't can't do live streams of games here on YouTube. Um, MLB will shut me down. So that's why we're doing the show. It's a new video game that just came out on Tuesday. It's really realistic. You might say it's even better than watching the, the like four hour game because I'm going to edit this down for you to probably around 15 minutes. So you'll get the highlights and we'll talk a little bit of baseball, talk about the Red Sox and the Rays and yeah, let's go. Here's Hanley Ramirez. He's in his last year with the Red Sox. He's got an option. If he gets like 400 plus plate appearances, he'll be back next year and the Red Sox don't want that. No, they want, they want Hanley gone. Um, they signed Mitch Moreland to play some first base, so he'll take enough at-bats away that Hanley will not qualify for his option. Chris Archer's on the mound for the Rays, and he might not be a Rays pitcher for too much longer. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Uh, he had a 4.07 earned run average last year, but he struck out 249 batters. That's a lot of batters for a starting pitcher. 201 innings. Had a losing record because he played for the Rays. The Rays, as you know, were a losing team last year. They had 76 wins. This year, they're probably going to be around the same. They didn't really get any better. Um, in fact, you might argue that they got worse. Alex Cobb is gone. Um, their, their left fielder, Corey Dickerson, is now playing left field with the Pirates. For some reason, after hitting 27 home runs and being an all-star, the Yankees, not the Yankees, sorry, the Rays decided to DFA him, designated for assignment. So they had 10 days to trade or re release him. They ended up trading um, Dickerson to the Pirates for Daniel Hudson, who is a middle reliever, and quite honestly, he was pretty crappy last year. Um, basically, it was a... Salary, salary for salary dump. I really don't understand it. I don't know what the Rays are doing down there. I'm sure a lot of you Rays fans are really frustrated by what they did. Um, I don't know. Leave a comment if you if you want to talk about the Rays. Get a little discussion going. The Red Sox, on the other hand, the Red Sox look like they will be a playoff team in 2018. Last year they were a playoff team. They had 89 wins. They won their division, and the Yankees finished right on their heels. We've got a new manager, Alex Cora, replacing John Farrell. Um, I don't know what to expect from this year. I think they will be pretty decent. Um, hopefully, David Price is healthy for the entire season. Okay, just made a base running error there. That's Raphael Devers being thrown, or sorry, Devers being thrown out at third base uh, to end the inning. Kind of a stupid play by Devers. But it happens. So I think the Red Sox will probably be a wild card this year. Probably the first wild card. I mean, they are pretty stacked on offense, especially after adding J.D. Martinez and his 45 home runs from last year. Um, they're still looking for that big bat ever since David Ortiz left a couple years ago. Kind of been looking for that presence in the middle of the order uh, to replace him and JD Martinez might be able to do that they've also got Andrew Benintendi coming back he was a 20 home run bat last year um, he's got a lot of power I like Benintendi also Mookie Betts 
a couple years ago, he was in the MVP discussion. And here's JBJ. Jackie Bradley Jr., their center fielder, just went deep. He had 17 home runs last year, so he's got potential for 20 dingers. A little bit of a low batting average. He had a 245 batting average last year, but he plays really good center field. I don't know if you've ever seen this guy throw, but he's got an unbelievable arm. Maybe one of the best arms in the major leagues. The guy can throw it from like the outfield, center field wall to home plate on the fly, basically. All right, so here we are. We are in Tropicana Field. There's a ground out. It's one nothing. Been to Tropicana Field a couple times. I uh, think I've seen four games there. I was actually on the field at Tropicana Field once. Um, my wife and I were down there for spring training a few years ago. And we just decided to drive past the field, and we noticed uh, there's like a door open. We, and so we walked in the door, and we literally walked right onto the field. There was like, I don't know if it was a gymnastics competition or something was going on, and it was it, it had been over. So there's some people lingering around, and we just kind of like walked in there like we were supposed to be there. It was pretty cool to be on the field at Tropicana Field. Um, Went back there the next year to see the Pirates when they were there. I think that was 2014. Also saw the Astros there. It's a nice stadium. A lot of people hate it. I liked it there. Um, I guess it is a little bit dimly lit. And not a lot of people go to games in South Florida in Miami and Tampa. It's kind of sad. Here's Ben Attendee. That's, that's way gone. One thing that's kind of interesting and different about batting practice at the Trop is the ushers stand in the front row and they blow their whistles when there's a ball coming. So I guess they want everyone to know because for some people, if, if you're not really used to tracking home run balls and such, you can lose it in that in that roof. Like the roof is kind of like an off white. So if you're not really focused and you don't know what you're looking for, you might not even see the ball. So they start blowing those whistles when they think a ball is coming and you see a lot of people ducking and everything. It's, it's actually, it's kind of weird. Another thing about Tropicana Field that is different is you're not allowed in the front row anywhere in the outfield unless you have a ticket for that seat. So the ushers stand in the front, and if you want to go to the front row, you better have a ticket there. I forget what row it is, like row F or whatever. So that, that makes it a little easier because you stand out a little more. It's easier to get balls thrown by the players if you're like the only person in the front row. So if you ever go to batting practice, make sure you get a front row ticket. The one thing that kind of stinks, especially, is they open so darn late down there. You can never even see Ray's batting practice. I think they open at like 540. So, basically, you're only going to see the visiting team. At Fenway Park, on the other hand, you can see the Red Sox hit and the visiting team hit. Uh, I go to Fenway Park whenever I can. I think I've seen, I don't know, maybe like six or seven games there. I went there last season. We saw two games there against the Royals. My daughter and I just went up for a couple days. The Red Sox have something really cool called Red Sox Nation, where you get to go in an hour early into the seats, and you can see all the Red Sox. So you can hang out in right field. You can go up on the Green Monster if you want for that first hour and check it out up there, which is not really a great place to catch home run balls because everything is really constricted there. Like, you don't have any range. It's, if you're claustrophobic, you wouldn't like sitting in those seats. Uh, but Fenway Park, love it. Love the history there. Yeah, it's it's old. Some things are not up to date and everything. The concourse is pretty cramped. But I like it. I, I would say it's in my top. I'd say it's probably top 10. Maybe like right around 9 or 10 in my top um, favorite stadiums that I've been to. I've been to 21 stadiums. Still have not, still have nine to go. Maybe we'll knock a couple off the list this year. We'll see what happens. I've got my 2018 schedule all planned out. Looks like my first game is going to be in Baltimore. There's another run. It's now three to nothing. Probably tomorrow on Saturday. Probably we'll head down to. Or sorry, not tomorrow. In two days on Saturday, we'll head down to Baltimore maybe for a game, depending on weather and everything. Uh, the Pirates don't come home until Monday. That's their home opener. And I live in Pittsburgh, so I have to wait until then. Looks like we're going to have pretty crappy weather for that first homestand. Pirates play the Twins. 
like I was telling you all in, in the uh, open of this video, I do go to 100 games a year. Um, the most games I ever went to in a single season was 156 back in 2014. I'm a high school teacher, so I get a lot of days off, especially in the summer. Um, so I was able to go to some of those days, like I would go to two two games in one day, go to like a one o'clock game and then a seven o'clock game or a four o'clock game and then like a seven o'clock game. Could do that like especially like in Chicago, Chicago, Milwaukee, stuff like that. A couple of uh, Cleveland's and Pittsburgh's. So that's back when I really, really was going for games all the time. I think I ended up that season with 1,114 baseballs I caught in just that season alone, um, which was the most I ever caught. Usually I'm right around 700, go to about 100 games, average seven a game. Just kind of a, a hobby that I developed uh, after showing up early for batting practice back in 2007. And basically, I, I was hooked ever since uh, ever since way back in the day, 2007, when I caught my first ball. So, speaking of balls being caught, that's going to be out number three as Kiermaier puts it away. And now we are on to the bottom of the eighth inning. Tampa Bay is trying to get something going. Brad Miller can't find any grass there there's a ground out and i'm gonna probably let chris sale pitch this entire game go for the shutout he's been pitching really well so he deserves the opportunity to go for it chris sale lost the cy young award last year to Corey kluber and the only reason he lost was the indians because the indians own chris sale like they would just batter him so bad he could not pitch decently against them it seems like it happened like at least two times like he gave up seven or more runs if i if i remember correctly so if that didn't happen i think he would have gotten cy young because he had 308 strikeouts which is just crazy not a lot of pitchers strike out 300 guys anymore because it just seems like they're not getting the innings to to be able to do it uh, back when I was growing up, pitchers used to pitch 36 innings. And by the way, Ben Intendi with his second home run of the day. Or sorry, pitchers used to get 36 starts back in the day when I was growing up. But now it seems like 30 to 32 is the magic number. Um, Sale had 32 starts last year. Kluber 29. So Sale beat him on innings, but Kluber had him on earned run average 225 to 290. Also, Sale was 17 and 8. Kluber was 18 and 4. So. That's a pretty pretty uh, close statistical comparison between those two guys. We'll see who wins the Cy Young Award this year. I think Justin Verlander might be in the conversation if he pitches like we think he can pitch. But Sale will be there again with Kluber and uh, Verlander. So going for the complete game here now, Chris Sale. By the way, keep track of all the players that hit home runs, like I uh, mentioned before. Um, you can enter the contest contest for additional tickets by emailing me a list of every player to hit a home run in all 15 of these games. My voice is feeling a little bit raspy um, from doing all these games, playing them, and then talking all this uh, commentary that I'm putting in here. Maybe I should just be quiet and let the game speak for itself. I do have some background music playing in case I have to just cease talking altogether. So, okay, two outs. One more out to go, and then this game will be over, and I can move on to the next game, which I'm playing will be the Phillies at Atlanta. I don't know why the uh, why Major League Baseball put so many games at four o'clock. It's like, why'd you do that? They have one seven o'clock game. On opening day, that's that's the Dodger game. That's it. Should have put a couple of those games at seven. I guess a lot of people like to call off work and go to opening day and whatnot. But it makes it tough if you're making videos for all these different games. I'm kind of crunched on time. All right, so that's it. Red Sox win. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. I have uh, 15 of these videos I'm putting up today, and I will be going to baseball games very soon. And filming everything that happens in batting practice. Look for those videos. Go back and watch my old videos if you're new to the uh, channel. And please subscribe. Thanks again. See you later.